Good morning. It's great to share with you again, but I have to admit it's a, it's a bit strange preaching to an empty room. Normally I'd get to see your friendly faces, but today I'm looking at a sheet of paper where the camera is located. This Sunday, April the 5th, is Palm Sunday. It's a reference to that final week of Jesus before his crucifixion. Scholars call that the Holy Week, and if you're not familiar with it, it's worth a, a little review today. That week begins on a Sunday. It's been years since Jesus had been in Jerusalem, and now he approaches the city riding on a donkey. And Jesus knows what he's doing. That was predicted by the Old Testament prophets. Jesus is making a bold claim to be the Messiah, the Savior, and the people get it. They join the parade, they start shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And they start laying down palm branches as they would for a king, hence the name Palm Sunday. And, and as Jesus enters the city, the crowds go wild. It's Passover time, and the city is literally overflowing with people who have come from all over for this holiday. Some of the religious leaders tell Jesus to silence the crowd. But Jesus responds to these leaders, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. They call this the triumphal entry, and some scholars say it was the happiest day in the life of Jesus. Uh, I'm not so sure. I want you to see what Luke records about it. And as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They'll dash you to the ground. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Why would Jesus shed tears on a triumphal day like that? Well, probably the first answer is just what we read. History records that Jerusalem was nearly destroyed by the Roman army in this exact manner of a siege about 40 years after Jesus said it. Another possibility is that Jesus knew the people would not accept him as the Messiah. You see, they expected a Messiah, a, a super warrior, who would rise up against the Roman occupation of their country. But Jesus came for a very different reason. He came to bring the good news of God's love and his grace to all people. But still, there's another obvious reason. I think this one's closer at home. Jesus knew what this Holy Week, as we call it, would bring. Countless debates and arguments with these religious leaders dealing with their hatred and backstabbing, the arrest on Thursday night, the illegal trials all through that night, and his horrible execution by crucifixion on Friday. Jesus also knew that the crowd that was shouting, blessed is the king, would also be the same crowd who would be shouting, crucify him, crucify him, that coming Friday. It's amazing how fickle people can be. Friday for Jesus was as dark as could be. Well, we're entering a difficult time as well. We're not sure what's going to happen on our Friday. Yesterday, Ohio extended its mandatory stay-at-home order to May 1st. Weeks ago, we had hoped that this crisis would be over by Easter. And so now it's terrifying to think we might still have a few more weeks. It is the uncertainty of all of this that disturbs us the most. But Fridays eventually become Sundays. Now, you know how the story ends. Jesus rose from the grave three days later on the following Sunday. There's part of an old sermon by S.M. Lockridge called, It's Friday, But Sunday's Coming. It talks about all the bad things that happened during that holy week. But each line ends with this phrase. It's Friday, 
but Sunday's coming. And there may be no greater truth for us this morning as we face this pandemic. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. These are the dark days of a Friday, the pain, the suffering, the fear, and, and even death. But Sunday's coming. It will soon be over. Our lives will return back to a normal, or as some say, a new normal. Our economy will again grow strong, and our churches will come back together with a renewed sense of importance because we realize how important we are to one another and how much we need one another. Hope is foundational in times like this, but hope has to be grounded in realism. Crucifixions precede resurrections. And as the song says, the darkest part of night is just before the dawn. So stay safe, stay faithful, and remember it may be Friday, but Sunday's coming. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for the hope we have in you and the confident assurance that you're going to be still in complete control. We thank you so much for your love and your grace and the fact that you promise to always be with us in any situation. So watch over us, keep us safe, and remind us that Sunday's coming. Through your name we pray, amen.